What's up everyone, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to be making a traditional planing stop and installing it to my Rubo workbench. Even though I have a pretty decent tail vise on my workbench, sometimes it's a lot easier and more efficient to use a planing stop, especially when working across the grain or on thin stock, and it's a great addition to have to the bench when doing more traditional hand tool woodworking. The wood for the planing stop is going to be made out of hard maple, and I'll start by cutting a rough length out at the miter saw. I'll run the billet through the joiner to get two flat sides 90 degrees to each other. I'll get the third face flat with the planer and then take it over to the table saw to square everything up. I ended up making the metal part of the planing stop from some scrap 3 16ths of an inch thick mild steel that I had. But if you don't want to do this part, you could pick up uh, one from Benchcrafted or Tools for Working Wood or relatively cheap. This whole process went pretty quick though, so I'll show you how I did it. I started by drawing out a pattern that I thought looked right on some graph paper. Then I cut it out and traced it or scribed it onto some scrap metal. And then I took that over to the bench vise and used a hacksaw to cut out the pattern. Once I cut the rough pattern out with the hacksaw, I went back with a file and cleaned up all the edges and sides just to try to square everything up and make them look as clean and professional as possible. I used a bench grinder to grind in a bevel at the wide end of the planing stop where the teeth are going to go, and this is going to allow me to sharpen the teeth to a fine point so it'll bite into the wood better. If you don't have a bench grinder, you could do this at the bench vise with a file and it'll go pretty quick as well. The plane stop is going to be held to the block of wood using a couple of number 10 screws, so I'm drilling out holes for those now. I'll also drill a couple of countersinks in for the screw heads so that they don't sit above the planing stop. Next I need to shape the teeth that's going to go on the end of the plane stop and they need to be pretty even across the top. So this is similar to sharpening a saw where I want to take the same amount of material away from each tooth area. Um, I'll start with a triangular file and file everything in and then come back and file the end teeth in with just a mill file. Now that I'm pretty much done with the metal part of the planing stop, I can lay out where the block is going to go into the bench top. I'm positioning the planing stop towards the end of the bench in the direction that I use the hand planes and uh, inboard of any of the dog holes that I utilize with my tail vise. I'll use my marking gauge to mark out with the grain on the top and bottom of the workbench. To mark the lines across the grain, I'll use a layout square and a marking knife. And now for the most nerve-wracking part of the build is chopping this big mortise into the top of my nice workbench. I'll start by taking a chisel and creating a shoulder on all four sides of the mortise. Next I'll hammer the chisel downward into the wall that I just created on all four sides until I create a little bit of a deeper curve and then I'll remove that waste the same way I did the first time and I'll keep repeating this until I get about an eighth of an inch deep. Using a layout square to keep my drill aligned and a 3 quarter inch spade bit, I'll drill 5 holes to create most of the mortise. I'm using the spade bit because it has a long point at the end and I'll drill most of the way through the top until I can start to feel the point come out the bottom and then I'll stop and move to the next hole. I'm doing this so that I don't blow out the bottom of the bench and this way I can align the drill bit um, coming back in from the bottom of the bench to remove that last little bit of material and it will ensure that I get a nice clean hole. Once I've removed most of the material with the drill bit, I'll come back in with a 1 inch chisel and a mallet and start to chop away the rest of the waste. I'll just remove a little bit of material at a time from all four sides until I slowly work my way out to the layout lines I created earlier. I don't want to make any mistakes here or cause any damage, so I'm pretty cautious with this part and it took me a lot longer than I think it should have. The alternating hard and soft grain of yellow pine is pretty tough on the chisels, so once I've gotten most of the material chopped out, I'll head over to the extra fine diamond stone and just start to hone the edge again. Then I'll take a few quick passes over at the strop to remove the burr and put a final polish on the chisel, and I'll be ready to get back to work. Now with the chisel razor sharp again, it's easy for me to pare down and clean up the walls of the mortise. I'll work into the corners and make sure I get everything squared up and cleaned up, and then I'll go check my progress with a combination square. 
And once I'm done with the chisel work, I'll come back in with a rasp and work on all four sides and work into the corners, making sure to remove any loose fibers and just clean up the hole the best I can. And now I'm ready to start fitting the wood block to the mortise. There's going to be a lot of pressure with the hand plane and the wood pushing up against the planing stop, so I'll orient the cross grain or the quarter saw grain across the width of the bench. Once I've got the grain orientation of the block figured out, I'll start planing away material and doing test fits to the mortise. I need the block to fit into the bench as tight as possible. The only thing that's going to hold the plane stop in place is friction, so I'll tap it with a mallet into place when I'm using it and then tap it down into the bench when I'm done. So I'll keep removing just a few shavings at a time and test fitting it. And then I'll stick the block in from the bottom and see where it's rubbing up against or where it's hitting. And I'll mark those spots out with a pencil and then use a rasp to just file away a little bit of material at a time until I have a nice good tight fit. The metal part of the planing stop has teeth that stick out in front of the wooden block to bite into the wood. So here I'm creating a small recess that those teeth will be able to go down into the bench and the whole planing stop will be below flush. After I'm finished with the mortise, I'll take a small file and create a chamfer around the entire hole. And this will just keep the uh, wood fibers from tearing out on the top of the bench over its lifetime of use. I'm using some 320 grit sandpaper just to clean up all the pencil marks that I created on the bench when laying out the mortise. I'm going to inlay the metal part of the planing stop into the wooden block. So I'll trace out the part and mark out the depth. I'll use a chisel to pare away most of the waste and I'll work my way around the marks that I made. And then I'll come back in with my marking knife and deepen those lines and then go back to paring away again. I'll keep repeating the process of scoring into the shoulder and paring away the waist until I get about an eighth inch down. Next I'll clamp the billet down to the workbench using a hold fast and pare away the last sixteenth of an inch or so down to the layout line I created earlier. And once most of the material is removed, I'll stick the part back on my leg vise, use some files and a chisel to clean up the recess a little bit more, and give the metal part of the planing stop a test fit. Once I'm happy with the fit, I'll mark out where the screws are going to go. I used some 220 grit sandpaper to wet sand and clean up the top of the planing stop just to get rid of any scratches or teeth mark left from the bench vise. Then I took the part over to my strop with some buffing compound on it and polished it out to a good shine. The metal part of the planing stop is going to be held to the wood billet with a couple of number 10 screws inch and a half long. And they're screwing down into end grain which isn't very strong. To fix this weak spot, I'm going to insert an oak dowel about an inch down into the wood billet so that the screws can screw into some cross grain and not just rely on the end grain. I'll mark off the location of where I want the dowel and then I'll use a half inch bit in my brace to cut the hole. I'm using this instead of a power tool because I just got the bits I wanted to try them out and it actually leaves a nice clean hole. Next I'll drill a couple of pilot holes for the number 10 screws. I'll apply some glue to the oak dowel and insert it into the wood block working the glue into the joint and make sure that I have a little bit sticking out on each end. I'll let the glue dry for a little while and then come back and cut the excess dowel rod with a flush cut saw. Then I'll take a couple passes with the hand plane just to get rid of any high spots. Now I can insert the metal part of the planing stop into the wooden block and drive the screws through the oak dowel. I think this is a pretty good solution for this part and I don't think that these screws driven into that oak dowel are going to come loose anytime soon. I taped off the metal part of the planing stop and then used my block plane to bring the wooden block down flush to it. Then I use a file just to chamfer the edges of the top of the block so that it doesn't split out when I hit it with a mallet. I'm applying some wipe on poly to the top of the block and to the workbench itself where I sanded away all the layout marks just to make it match what the rest of the bench looks like. I let the finish dry overnight and then came back the next morning, grabbed my mallet and gave this thing a test drive. It works pretty well, the friction fits really nice and it only takes a couple of taps to get it down into the bench and a couple of taps to get it into position to use. 
The planing stop's a great addition to have to a hand tool woodworking bench, and with the combination of a batten, you can do a lot of different tasks with this, from working across the grain to working on really thin stock or really small parts that don't fit between your tail vise and bench dogs. Well that's it for this build, and whether you're going to buy a planing stop or build one like I did here, I hope you got something useful from this video. And if you did, I hope you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.